Today, we're gonna to be looking at the supplements that Andrew Huberman personally takes and recommends. I listen to every episode of his podcast to get this information so you don't have to. We're gonna be talking about the supplements that he uses for overall health, for sleep, for enhancing cognitive performance, as well as for his brain health, and a few others as well. Let's dig in. If you don't know who Andrew Huberman is, you might be living under a rock. But as a brief intro, he is a neurobiologist at Stanford, and he has an extremely popular health podcast that dives into performance, supplementation, and a plethora of other health-related topics. In this comprehensive guide, we're gonna dig into Andrew's personal supplementation regime and also provide some commentary on why these supplements work, the research, and if you should be introducing them to your own supplement list. Before we get started, it goes without saying, if you're gonna add anything to your personal regime, you might wanna to talk to a doctor and just ensure that it's the right move for you. To get started, let's talk about the supplements that Andrew Huberman is taking for overall foundational health. And that starts with vitamin D3. Vitamin D3 is the one you get from the sun. It's converted into a steroid hormone in the body and many Americans are deficient in it. The best thing to do is get blood work to see where your vitamin D3 levels are and supplement accordingly. But for most people, kind of a 3,000 to 4,000 IUs a day is gonna be perfect, especially in the winter months when you're not getting a lot of sun exposure. The next one is gonna be vitamin K2. MK7 specifically is the most bioavailable form of this. And this is gonna be really important for your cardiovascular health. And there's a lot of data showing it helps reduce calcium deposits in your arteries. The final one for foundational health is a solid multivitamin. Obviously, Andrew Huberman is sponsored by AG1, which is a great product, but fairly expensive. So any kind of high quality multivitamin is gonna fill that same bucket. This is not a particularly great one, However, it's what I have right now, and this is just something I'm taking to cover my foundational minerals and little vitamins I might not be getting in my diet, and it's more of a blanket insurance policy to ensure that I got all those micronutrients in order. The next round of supplements we're gonna be talking about are the supplements that are gonna boost your testosterone, help you build more muscle, and have more energy throughout your day. When taking supplements that change your hormone levels, you wanna be a little extra cautious here. This is one where it's worth talking to your doctor or getting blood drawn to make sure there's no damaging effects happening. But as we get started, the first supplement for increasing your testosterone is Tonkat Ali. Tonkat Ali stimulates luteinizing hormone and basically makes your body produce more testosterone. And it is taking more testosterone in circulation and forming it into free testosterone. I took 400 milligrams of this for two months and saw my free testosterone increase about 20% and my overall testosterone also increase around 20%. The next supplement for boosting testosterone is Fidogia Agrestis. I haven't personally had to use that one yet, haven't found the need, and of all these supplements for boosting testosterone, it's probably the least researched with the most potential side effects. The next one is zinc. That's a basic mineral that's really important for your overall hormone regulation system. And about 15 milligrams a day is gonna ensure that your body has enough for optimal testosterone production. Finally, we have boron, another trace mineral that is involved in hormone production and testosterone synthesis. This one I'm taking about three milligrams a day um, just to ensure, again, my body has all the building blocks necessary for maximizing my testosterone levels. The next supplements we're going to be talking about are the ones to maximize and optimize your sleep. Andrew Huberman has a number of episodes on sleep, and I think we all know how critical sleep is for your overall health, both mentally and physically. The first supplement for improving your sleep is magnesium L3 and 8. This is a very unique form of magnesium that's very effective at crossing the blood-brain barrier. And I'm taking about 140 milligrams of magnesium L3 and 8, 30 to 40 minutes before I'm falling asleep. Magnesium L3 and 8, once it crosses the blood-brain barrier, is helpful in GABA production, which is gonna really downregulate your body and get it ready for sleep. Next up, we have L-theanine, which is an amino acid found in things like green tea. This helps, again, the body relax and just get ready for a sleepful state. I take around 100 milligrams of L-theanine about 30 minutes before bed again, but this does cause some people to have crazy dreams. So if that's you, it's probably a good one to avoid. Now we have apigenin, which is a flavonoid that's found in chamomile. This one is not great for women because it's involved in the estrogen pathway, but for men, taking around this 50 milligrams 30 minutes before sleep can again help with relaxation. Apigenin has a calming effect, again working through the GABA pathway in the brain. Next up, we have inositol or myo-inositol. This really helps onset to sleep and is really helpful for people who wake up a lot in the middle of the night and they have struggles falling back asleep. For myo-inositol, I'll take 750 milligrams prior to sleep 
but this is one I only use when I really need it, when I'm having periods of high stress or just having struggles sleeping. There's only a couple sleep supplements left, and the next one is GABA, which is the primary inhibitory neurotransmitter in the brain. There is some debate if GABA crosses the blood-brain barrier, but recent research has shown it might be working through the gut access and still getting into the body. But again, this is one I'm not gonna be taking too often and saving for those times I really need to sleep. Lastly, we have glycine, which is a non-essential amino acid found in things like collagen. And this one actually has proven to help people fall asleep faster and promote healthy sleep architecture. And for this one, around two to 3,000 milligrams, again, 30, 40 minutes before falling asleep. I know that's a lot of supplements for sleep, but I definitely recommend being able to sleep without any supplements and not depending on them. This girl right here is the primary example that you can have incredible sleep every night without supplementation. So try to get sleep the healthy way, and these are great things to have in your tool chest when you're struggling sleeping, you're traveling, or just need a little extra help. As a quick aside, Andrew Huberman does not recommend taking melatonin for sleep. The dose is super physiological in these pills, and it actually has been proven to maybe help you pass out, but can ruin your sleep architecture quite a bit. This is a supplement I save only when I'm adjusting to a new time zone, maybe the first day or two at most. But this is something you don't wanna use regularly based on Andrew Huberman. Huberman, like many of us, is always trying to optimize his focus and performance, both mentally and physically. And these next supplements are gonna help us increase our focus and our performance. The first of those is good old caffeine. Caffeine works by blocking our adenosine receptors and it gives us more alertness. So our brain is it signaling that we're tired and has been proven across many studies to help with focus as well as physical performance. Huberman is also a big proponent of delaying caffeine intake until 90 minutes after waking. But I personally find this is not as important for people who metabolize caffeine much more quickly, which is usually a genetic thing. But I do find value in waiting 30 to 40 minutes to have my caffeine just to get my body used to waking up more naturally and not having that kind of spike of adrenaline first thing in the morning. Next supplement that is gonna help with focus is Alpha GPC. Alpha GPC works by increasing acetylcholine levels in the brain, which helps with focus. This is one I don't personally take often, but if I have a bout of intense work or a workout that I really need to knock out, it can give you that little extra boost that you might need. Next up, we have L-tyrosine, which is a precursor to dopamine. And this one will cause a pretty intense bout of focus but I personally find a big crash with it. So I've had this for years and I've maybe taken it a handful of times. It might be great if you've procrastinated and need to get something done in an immediate amount of time, but I personally don't like this one for everyday use and I just keep it around because I bought it and maybe one day I'll need it. The final supplement Andrew Huberman recommends for focus is phenylethylamine or PEA, which is much easier to pronounce. I personally have not used this one as well, but it's another supplement that can help with focus and kind of dedicated work. PEA works by promoting neurotransmitters that are involved in focus, mental clarity, and memory. The next round of supplements are for a healthy brain and maintaining good cognitive performance. The ones we just focus on are more for intense focus in the moment, but these are things that we can take daily that keep our brain in working order so we're just as sharp as we possibly can be. The first of these is omega-3 fatty acids like those found in fish oil. And I aim for about two to three grams of EPA a day, which is about one and a half grams of DHA. Omega-3 fatty acids are essential for so many functions of the body. They're an anti-inflammatory, they help with hormone production, and in terms of brain health, they help with neurotransmitter activity, mostly through the cell membranes in your brain and helping support that. Omega-3 fatty acids also have a ton of research showing that they help with many mental health disorders like anxiety, depression. For me, omega-3s are a foundational supplement that I am taking daily due to the vast research in so many areas and the benefits that come through taking them. The next supplement is creatine, which a lot of people are used to for muscle building and for endurance and for strength. However, there is a ton of research showing the mental performance benefits of taking creatine. It's been proven to help with cognitive performance as well as things like memory. Creatine is especially important if you're vegan because you're probably not getting much creatine in your diet. I'm personally taking five grams of creatine daily, not only for the mental health benefits, but as well as the strength and the performance benefits that come along with it.
The final supplement that Andrew Huberman recommends for brain health is glutamine, which is a precursor for glutamate. Supplementation with glutamine has evidence showing that it can help with cognitive performance, especially under stressful situations, by replenishing neurotransmitter stores. When considering a supplement protocol, it's really important to understand your personal goals, the cost that you're willing to spend, and also the effectiveness that you can measure on yourself. This is Andrew Huberman's personal supplement stack, but you might find that your own supplement stack looks very different. So I definitely recommend you do your own research and also pay attention to how adding a specific supplement might change your biomarkers that you might get from blood tests or how you're feeling day to day. I personally have used a lot of these supplements in the past, but not all of them are things that I'm using daily or even regularly. So find what works for you, and I hope that this overview of the supplements Andrew Huberman is taking, what they might be useful for, helps you find something that's gonna improve your performance and help you out. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so, as this is a brand new channel and that helps me out immensely. I plan on diving a lot more into supplementation, things that are gonna be beneficial for your performance and health, and I'd love to get more support so I can do things like doing blood tests before and after supplementation to see how it might impact our bodies and our overall health. With that, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next video.